Hey guys, welcome back to another video in InfoSec Path. This is video 17 in the video series of Windows Server 2019. In this video, what I want to do is install Hyper-V and I want to show you guys how to configure it, install it, and add a virtual machine at the end. So if you're ready for the video, let's get into it. Thank you. All right guys, welcome back. So this is video 17 in the Windows Server 2019 training, hands-on training. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is installing Hyper-V. How to install Hyper-V and configure it from soup to nuts, all right? So if you don't know what Hyper-V is, don't worry, we're gonna get into it and show you guys how to configure it, set it up. So there's two types of hypervisors. There's a type one hypervisor and a type two hypervisor. What is the difference? All right, so a type one hypervisor is a bare metal architecture. So you have your servers, your HP, your Cisco, your Dell machine, and then you install like ESXi from VMware or Citrix Zen server directly on the server. And then all your VMs reside on top of that. So that's your bare, bare metal architecture. Okay, so the other type is type two. So it's a hosted architecture. What does that mean? This is pretty much what we're going to be doing, right? We have my base operating system, Windows 10, and I have VMware Workstation, which is the type two hypervisor that resides on top of my virtual machine. I mean, on top of my physical machine. So, so this is some examples. Type one, you have Hyper-V, you're going to have Hyper-V Core. Um, you have VMware, Works, uh, VMware ESXi, Zen server from Citrix. And a type two hypervisor is like VMware Player, VMware Workstation, like we're using VirtualBox from Oracle, and so on and so forth. Is KVM? There's a, there's a couple other ones. So this is going to be our setup. We have obviously our primary domain controller. We have our Hyper-V server that we're going to be installing, the Hyper-V role, and we're going to assign it 32 gigs, and the normal a couple steps, right? Change the server name. We're going to move it to the OU, the proper OU. We're going to add the Hyper-V role. We're going to add a VM on top of it so we can get the feel of configuring a virtual machine, configuring the host, and um, we'll test it, all right? So let's get into it. So let's bring this bad boy over here, all right? So this is our, this is our environment. Let me, let me make this bigger. So, so a few things before we do this, all right? So if you're following along, if you're like step-by-step, step, if you're using VMware Workstation and you have enough memory, I assume you're following along, right? So if you don't have enough memory, you don't have to dedicate that much. You're just not gonna be able to run with the best performance. But the number one thing a lot of people make mistakes of, you have to enable VP, uh, VT technology, which is the Intel VT, uh, Intel Virtual Technology. So in VMware, you know, obviously if you're installing this on a server, you have to do this in the BIOS, right? But if you're doing it in VMware, you're gonna go ahead and right click on the virtual machine, go to the settings of the virtual machine. I wanna do this before we even start. And when you go to processes, obviously my machine is on, so I'm not gonna be able to do it, but you see here it's enabled, virtualized uh, Intel VTX technology. So if you have AMD or whatever. But this is, you have to have this virtualization engine in, enabled or you're gonna get errors and it's not gonna work. All right, just wanna clarify that and put it out there. All right, so let's get started. Let me actually open up, make sure I remember my, uh, my, my settings and everything. All right, so first things first, let me go ahead and change the IP. And you've probably seen this 10,000 times. So, you know, I like to do it together just in case you guys jump around and, and it's just best to do it together all the time. And I want to make this one 210, uh, 50.1, 50.1. My DNS is 50.201 for my primary DC. And that's my router to get out to the internet. All right, we want to get to the internet in a second. Boom. All right, let's close that. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And we're gonna join this bad boy to the domain. 
And um, we're going to change the name to do win 2K 19-HV01, which is Hyper-V. Hyper and my domain is infosecpat.local. So wait that wait until that authenticates. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put uh, administrator. All right, and there's a few things I did, and I want to show you guys on my domain controller. I set up a new user for Hyper V admin, just so, for example, in the real world, you want to do this just so you can look at event logs. You can see, you can keep audit trails of who's making changes. Etc. Etc. It's just best practice, and I want to do it. I'm doing this whole course like I would actually implement a, an infrastructure or how I would architect a solution. Every, someone else may do it different. You know, I'm just showing you the way I've done it and I do it right. Um, everyone, you know, there's a million ways to skin a cat. So let's go ahead and hit OK there, and we're going to reboot this. This is fine. I know exactly why because I'm using. I'm pretty much utilizing IPs and, and and all that. So let that restart and let's go to my domain controller. Let's log into the domain. And so I made in Florida, I made users, I made an ITOU and Hyper V admin. So I made a Hyper V admin. So when we log reboot and log in, we're gonna log in as Hyper V admin. So if we see DNS now, we should see uh, in here, we should see Hyper-V01. Let me refresh this bad boy. And what did I say? 210? Uh, 210, 210, It's probably going to give me, give it a second. HP, here we go. Boom. So let's go ahead and um, let's go to computers. Refresh computers, you should see Hyper-V01. Okay, boom, let's bring this into the servers. And I started removing some servers, so just to make some room and, you know, it is what it is. You know, those old servers we're not gonna need because we passed those courses already. So let's go ahead and minimize this. Let's go ahead and see where we're at on our Hyper-V server. Okay, it's rebooted. So now let's go ahead and log in and we're gonna go to other user. We're gonna actually log in as the Hyper-V admin. H Y P E R V admin and then my fancy password that I created for him or her, whoever that person is. In this case, I'll say he because of me, he because of me. Can't mess with me because I'm from NYC. Look, I can spit some rhymes too. All right, so we'll go to local server and we'll make sure everything took, everything looks good here. Boom, boom, boom. I'll firewalls off because our group policy. And we have 32 gigs of RAM. And so another thing that I did behind the scenes, I, you know, you guys should know how to add storage, right? You should know how to add a hard drive and um, initialize the disk and do all that stuff. So I did that. I made a Hyper-V directory here and I put some ISOs, 2012, uh, 2016 and a 2019 ISO. So when we you know, install 2016 in, in a little bit, and we can see how to do that, okay? So that's that. So let's go ahead and get crackle icon. So let's go to manage, let's go to add roles and features. Let's go to next, it's a role base. Yep, next, next. So in here, you're gonna hit Hyper-V, add features. And if you don't enable that feature with the Intel um, VT, you, you will get an error right here. It will say, wah, you can't proceed because it's not compatible. So now obviously it worked for us because we're able to continue. Okay, just hit next, next. We'll, we'll configure all of this later. V switches, we're gonna be configuring V switches and the migration, we'll, don't worry about this. Just do everything default, the, the stores and everything here, we're gonna be changing all of this. This is, this is coming soon. And then it requires a restart, so go ahead, we're gonna auto reboot it. It's an install, and we'll let that do its thing. All right, so let's go. So I'm gonna make sure our, so in, in here, we're gonna be creating more directories, and I don't wanna do it yet because I don't wanna jump the gun. Uh, once we actually have the um, 
the Hyper-V manager up and running, we can go ahead and we do some after post installation configs. All right, so we'll give this a minute. This will probably take a few minutes and I think it reboots about two or three times and um, we, should be, we should be good to go and continue this process. And I can't believe this is the 17th video. This is pretty amazing. I'm enjoying this journey, you know, 64%, 80%. So, yep, there it goes. Now it's going to reboot. So, hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as I am, you know, like, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm hoping to probably hit 25 videos um, from the looks of it, from everything I've written down and different topics I want to show you guys. Um, obviously, this is pretty much getting hands-on, entry-level, learning about system administration, you know, there's a lot deeper stuff we can get into, but this is pretty much, you know, the over, the, over, the high overview of getting these uh, technologies set up and configured and just have the visibility so you can write on your resume, I've touched Hyper-V, I've touched DFS, I've touched group policies, I've touched Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, all these technologies that were iSCSI, file servers, print servers, everything that we're showing you in these videos are beneficial, you know? So just take it, soak it in, and you know, learn it. It's just a lovely thing, you know, giving away talent or giving away like the, the skills that I've learned over the years that took me a very long time to learn some stuff. And, you know, I didn't have the free resources like there is today. So definitely take advantage. But all right, cool deal. So that um, rebooted. So I want to log back in as Hyper-V. Oh, I think I fat fingered that. Oh man, my back's been killing me this week. Actually over the weekend, I think I actually pulled my back. So yeah, so now just like uh, gonna finish up some installation for the Hyper-V. And once this is uh, done, we'll close it, we'll continue and then we'll open up the um, the uh, Hyper-V manager, and we'll we'll get to work. We'll get this thing crack a lacking. All right, so installation succeeded. Perfect, we can hit close here, and we'll see what services are stopped. We can just start all these bad boys, just so we can have everything green, green, green machine, like the Hulk, Hulk smash. All right, let's um, refresh this, bada bing, everything's good, what the hell is this? Let's start it and refresh there we go all right so let's go ahead and go to tools hyper-v manager and hyper-v manager so this is where the fun begins so we we have our server here so the first thing we're going to do is go to virtual switch manager okay so in virtual switch manager we're going to be creating three virtual switches and ex external which is this is going to be able to get outside your network so you can get to the internet, get to all that stuff. As it says here, create a, create a virtual switch that binds with your physical network adapter so that the virtual machines can access the physical network. So this is pretty much the physical, like when I plug into the switch, the, the, the physical switch on our network, we plug into this port and this is how it's going to traverse. All right, then internal, this connects the switches this is a virtual switch that can be used for virtual machines that run on the, the physical computer, all right, between the virtual machines. And we have a private, so this can pretty much, um, virtual switch, uh, uh, virtual switch that runs between the physical computers. So exactly, so this is, so we'll, we'll create all three, but we're gonna utilize, when we create our VM, we're gonna utilize the external, obviously. So we can hit create new, and we can name this, ext dash vswitch and we're going to allow management for the operating system obviously because we need management to 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 work so we can just put a little note this is this is connecting to switch 4 on port 10 or 24 or whatever you however you want to do it but obviously this is nested networking so we're using this in a nested environment so it's connected to my switch somewhere i don't know but this is connected to my PC and, and, and so on and so forth. So we can go ahead and apply that. Okay. That's fine. Pending connect. Yep. It's going to go ahead and restart. It's going to apply the changes. 
And then we're gonna go back, we're gonna do an internal one, create it. And we can do int dash v switch. And you can have this internal, boom. And then we can create one more for private. PRI dash V switch. Okay, this is a private. Perfect. So now we have our three V our three V switches. And this is the one that's connected to our because we only have one NIC. So on a real server, you may have redundant connections, teaming, you know, you uh, NIC teaming. This is a whole different subject, but I'll leave that for, for another day. But yeah, we only have one physical NIC. Okay, cool. So we're done here. And now let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, next thing we're going to do is go to the Hyper-V settings. And this is what I was saying before. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a directory on our D drive now. And here, we're going to create a new directory. We're going to name this HV data. And then in here, we're going to create a directory is virtual hard disk. New virtual hard disks. And so if I copy this directory, copy, paste this in here because this is this is the virtual disk. This is where I want my location to be. Hit apply. That should be fine. And for the virtual machines, I want to put it in V. I want to put it right on here. So HV HV data. Copy this and paste it there. Perfect. And everything else should be good. We can do live migration. We can do replication settings. This is all for uh, for another another time. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. And now Hyper-V is good to go. So now, as you saw before, we have our ISOs directory. So we're going to install a VM. So we're going to do new virtual machine. And we're going to go ahead and hit next. Our name of our machine, you see here, the location is going to be DHV data. Okay. And what I want to name this is win 2K. 16. I want to do 2016 here. Okay. Hit next. I want to do a generation two. Okay. Go ahead and hit next. I want to assign four gigs. So four gigs is 4096. Whoops. If my num lock was on. 4096. Cool deal. Hit next. See, now we have the three NICs. So in a real environment, if you have different more NICs or less NICs or whatever, but in this case, we're going to use the external V switch. This is the connection that we want to utilize. Okay, so hit next. This is all good. Create a new drive. This is the v, uh, VHDX. In VMware, they call them VMDKs, but in Hyper-V, they're called virtual hard disk. All right, so as far as the size of the disk, we can just make it 60 gigs. That should be fine. All right, so... That's all good, good, next. So we can install the operating system later, or if we have the ISO image like we do, we can go ahead and install an operating system from a bootable image file. So we can go to browse, we can go to our D drive, Hyper-V 2016, and now we just chose that ISO, right? Hit next. This is the overview of the wizard, and you can re read all of this and see what, you know, if you want to change anything, you go to previous, etc. I'm going to go ahead and hit finished and let that do its thing. Before we turn it on, I want to do one few few more things. I want to go to settings and I want to do processors. I want to add four processors just so it can run a little better. I have the I have the power on my on my physical box. I think I have like I don't remember 32 processors or something. But I should be good. So hit OK and let's go ahead and connect and start. And now this will start installing our virtual machine. So we'll give this a few moments while that goes. And once this is okay, perfect. Now we can just hit next install. We should see our 60 gig partition in a second. Once our 60 gig partition comes up, we can choose it and go to next. Uh, I don't have a key. I don't care about that right now because we're so we can just install standard. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
standard desktop experience so it's not core edition, hit next and hit I accept and install Windows Advanced, AL60 gig partition, hit next. And this will go install installing the files. And once this is done, we'll, we'll resume in a second. I'll let this do its thing and then we'll come back. I don't want to cut the video short. I want to do this complete. So give me a couple minutes while this goes through and I'll, I'll be resuming shortly. All right, guys. So now we're just completed. So now it's the machine is rebooting. Once it's done rebooting, it will continue doing its process. Okay. So hopefully everyone's staying safe with the COVID-19. Um, everyone's safe and healthy. And um, I just pray for everyone every day that this thing passes and things can get semi back to normal. Like I miss going to the gym. I miss playing soccer. I miss playing hockey, bowling. Obviously everyone knows I'm a bowler. If you don't, now you do. I, I love bowling. Um, so hopefully things get back to normal. You know, it's, it's already May, May 4th. And it's, it's been over a month. Like this, this thing is just crazy. All right. So now that we're going to put in our administrator password. Okay, hit finished. And now this is 2016. Now let's go ahead and control delete. Log in. And technically, with that nick that we utilized, we should be able to get out to the internet with this bad boy. And let's see. Let's see if I know a little bit about computers. All right, so let's do a CMD. Let's see what my IP address is. All right, we're getting out to the internet. Obviously, we don't care about IPv6, but let's see if we can pick Google.com. And it's working. DNS is working. Everything is working. So that's pretty much how you get Hyper-V up and running, installed, a virtual machine. We can see on our D drive right now, this is our virtual disk. This is the virtual disk that we installed for Win, Win 2K19, uh, 16, my bad virtual machines we can see the images right here so this is it everything is uh everything is up and running we're on the internet this thing is fully functional right now so hopefully you guys enjoyed it please like subscribe share um i'm going to put the link for the for the playlist right above somewhere in that little corner somewhere so click on that learn learn every topic that i'm teaching if you have any questions feel free to just leave a comment hit me up on social media and i'm here to answer any questions so thanks for tuning in and uh see you guys in the next video thanks again thank you